Hi everyone, Ross at Teacher Talker. I'm posing this short explanation to support this blog post in order to support you or some of the colleagues that you work with if you're talking about teaching and learning and observations. What I'd like you to do is to watch this introduction and then watch all the other videos alongside this and then answer some of the questions that I pose. Uh, so firstly from me, some provocations. Um, are learning walks a waste of time? Do you reliably observe um, teachers uh, with your judgments? Um, how do you know your observations lead to teacher development? Um, who benefits from observations? Is it the teacher themselves or the observer? Um, so I discovered a, a, a method uh, from my doctoral research about three years ago, it totally transformed the way that I approach lesson observation. And I wish I'd learned it many, many years ago. Um, and the ultimate goal of lesson observation should be to improve teacher performance, not just check in on consistency or give teachers a hard time. So all of us, particularly middle and senior leaders out there watching, must equip ourselves to observe one another more reliably. I mean, how many of us have had training? How many of us have a qualification in observing? Um, so I've discovered this other version. What I'd like to do is watch these videos, uh, answer the questions. And this is based on an academic approach, which hopefully will elicit more reliable conclusions, valid judgments in you. And I thought I knew everything there was to do with lesson observations, coaching and feedback until I just discovered how to observe as a researcher. And as a result of this process, evaluating the quality of teaching and learning will improve. Classroom doors will open and teachers will develop. So it's a bold claim to make, but I'm already living this methodology in a large number of schools around the world. This was prior to the pandemic, as well as also virtually during the pandemic. So I'll do my best to describe the process shortly, and then I want you to also watch each of the videos and answer some of the questions. So do your observations have any impact? Um, I've conducted many horror stories. I'm sure you have too. I've designed all sorts of methods, metrics, spreadsheets, but yeah, I don't really know what long-term impact it has um, on individuals. Um, you know, I've got a good degree of um, knowledge in terms of best methods, its impact on standards or teachers, but I'm talking here as a whole school, um, but also individually in terms of how we learn to observe. Uh, you know, we don't often get much training. It's often uh, part, uh, imparted from one to another. Um, so the, the, the happier schools, and I use that word carefully, um, gather their teachers together to talk about teaching and learning on a regular basis, but they share video content of one another to learn, to understand complex teaching processes, to unpick them and to learn how to reliably evaluate them as well as to enhance their performance. So do you work in a school like that? Um, so I, I believe learning walks serve a purpose, you know, monitoring, checking on habits, displays, keyboard, uh, keywords, to try and develop this consistency, but not one school I've worked with can claim they are consistent in every class. Why? Because that balance between autonomy, sorry, accountability, autonomy, and, you know, almost pedagogical absence. So how do we get it right? And how do we have this impact on pupils should be twofold. Um, so when I ask, I'll just finish with this. When I ask a room full of teachers, hands up who works in a position of leadership responsibility that gives you permission to watch other teachers, you'll see a large number of hands go up in the room. Taking it further, you might then ask, keep your hands up if you've received any formal training, and then you'll see the number of hands tends to drop dramatically. And then when you ask if there's anyone left, as a formal qualification in observational practice, I mean from maybe a research or academic point, you'll pretty much see no hands remaining. And I understand why this is the case, but we should then try to do our best with reduced budgets, reduced time, all those issues that we have in schools to support one another and you know raise the pro status of the teaching profession, but also equip us to help us stay in our classrooms to develop happier teaching methods, improve teacher well-being, uh, mental health, and ultimately have a big impact on our kids. So I want to change this. Uh, I want to reduce observational bias, particularly I think this is often 
influenced by learner walks, school inspections, visitors, those types of things. So how do we improve observation, reliability and open door culture? So please watch the videos and then I outline four steps to help you change the way that you might approach uh, observations in the future. Uh, I hope you find it of use and, and do let me know how you get on.